Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Chicken Kiev. That's right. I wanted to do an authentic Russian recipe in honor of the Sochi Olympics. And by Russian, of course, I mean Ukrainian. And by Ukrainian, of course, I mean French. But if it makes you feel any better, this wasn't even called Chicken Kiev until some restaurant in New York started calling it that. But anyway, despite being about as Russian as a corn dog, this is still one of the most delicious chicken recipes in history. And this is how you make it. So step one here, we're going to make some garlic butter. And to do that, I'm debuting my brand new olive wood mortar and pestle. Oh, she's a beauty. And into it, I'm going to add two small or one very large clove of garlic that's been chopped up a little bit. We'll also give it a big pinch of salt to help it grind. And we're going to go ahead and give that a thorough smashing, which these things are perfect for. Although the bottom wasn't quite flat enough, so I put this underneath. But anyway, we're going to smash that garlic. And once we do, we're going to go ahead and add some chopped Italian parsley, or as the Italians call it, parsley. And we'll give that about a one minute pounding. And at that point, we're going to put in some butter. And we'll go ahead and pestle that until it's thoroughly mixed. And once it is, your garlic parsley butter is done. And sure, if you don't have one of these, you could just chop the parsley, chop the garlic, mix it into the butter. But this is so much better. You're going to get a much sharper, stronger, more intense garlic flavor. You're also going to beat up that parsley enough to let some of the chlorophyll go into the butter, which is going to give it a glorious color. And once our butter is thoroughly mixed in, we're going to go ahead and transfer that onto a piece of plastic wrap. And we're going to pop it in the fridge to firm up a little bit while we prep our chicken breasts. And there they are. I have two breasts. And we're using some nice sized breasts. Those are about eight ounces each. And yes, this will work with smaller breasts, but using larger breasts will increase your chances for success. You know, kind of like casting one of those Real Housewife shows. And by the way, if they come with that little tenderloin, that little chicken finger attached, go ahead and pull that out. They should look just like this. And then what we're gonna do before we fill these is pound these out. So we're gonna place that what was skin side down on the plastic. And then we'll put another piece of plastic over that and we'll take our meat pounder and pound that out pretty thin. I'll say about a quarter inch just to give you a measurement, but it might be a little thinner than that. All right, you just don't want to break through is all. So we're going to pound that out, and it should look something like this. And then before we stuff that, we're going to go ahead and season that up with some salt and freshly ground black pepper. And then once that's seasoned, we're going to go ahead and take half our butter and place that right in the center of that slightly wider end of the chicken. In fact, let me turn this so it's easier to see. So the butter goes in the center of the wider end of the breast. And then what we're going to do is take this longer, skinnier piece and flip flap it over the butter. Yes, flip flap is an official culinary term, but we're going to use that flap of chicken to fold over and envelop the butter. And then we'll gather up all the edges like this. And that's going to trap that butter in the center. And if you follow the rest of the steps correctly, that will not leak out. And by the way, we're not trussing this. We're not using skewers. We're not using toothpicks. So we're going to trap our herb butter in the center of this all naturally with no performance enhancing fasteners. So gather that meat up like that, which is going to give you a smooth top and a very rugged bottom. We're going to place it on the plastic like this and then gather up the edges of the plastic and we'll give it a little twist, not too tight, just enough to keep it all together. And then we'll place that on a plate. And then all we need to do is pop those in the freezer for about a half hour until they just start to get firm. We don't want it frozen solid. We just want it frozen enough to hold the bottom together. So even though the sides might still feel kind of soft, where we gathered all that meat together on the bottom should be frozen firm enough to bread. And of course, we're going to use the classic three-station breading system. First, we're going to dredge it in seasoned flour. All that is is flour with some salt added to it. And then after it's been thoroughly dredged in flour, we're going to go ahead and pop that in an egg wash, which all that is is a couple beaten eggs. And then once it's been thoroughly coated with the egg wash, the last stop is this bowl of panko breadcrumbs. You could totally use regular breadcrumbs for this. That's actually more traditional, but I do like the panko. A little sharper, a little crunchier, a little more multifaceted. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and bread that in panko. And when we are positive, it is thoroughly coated. We're going to go ahead and place that back on the plates on top of a few extra breadcrumbs. And we're going to go ahead and pop that back in the freezer for exactly 15 minutes. We want these to firm up just a touch before we fry them. So pop those in. And that's going to be the perfect amount of time for you to heat up your oil which I'm officially going to say is 350, even though I didn't wait. Mine was like 300. I'm a little impatient. By the way, next to your oil, you're going to want a foil lined pan because after we fry these, they're going right in the oven. And then once our oil is up to temperature and our chicken's been in the freezer for 15 minutes, we're going to place that in seam side down. And we're going to let that fry just like that for one minute exactly. So after one minute, go ahead and flip it over and we'll leave it on the other side about a minute. All right, we're not cooking it in the oil. We're just sealing it and starting the crust. And don't be scared, some of those seams might open up just a hair. It's okay, the butter's not coming out. And then we're going to pull it out, let the excess oil drain, and pop it on a foil-lined sheet pan. 
and we're going to finish these in the oven. But before we do, I want you to sprinkle a little extra salt on top. I think I heard that keeps the top a little crispier. I don't know. And then we'll just mark our territory a little bit here with a shake of cayenne. And at that point, those are ready to go in the center of a 400 degree oven for exactly 15 minutes. If you're using the same size chicken breast I am, or until they look like this. Check it out. They should be beautifully golden brown. And we'll talk about testing done this on the blog. It's a little bit tricky because you can't cut into this. And then we're going to let those sit resting for five minutes. This is critical. If for whatever insane reason you cut right into these, you might see a tiny bit of pink here and there. But as they sit and rest for five minutes, they will finish cooking perfectly. And at that point, you can transfer this onto your plate. And if you're thinking, hey, you forgot the sauce. No, I didn't. You forgot it was inside. So I'm going to take a fork and knife. And what you are about to witness can never be unseen. Check this out. One of the great sights in all of chicken cookery that gorgeous chicken breast, crispy on the outside, moist and tender within, and of course that amazing herb garlic butter just pouring out, running over everything. Just truly unbelievable. And sure, I realize this requires a little bit of work, a little bit of prep, but you know what? Just like anything in life, what you get out of something depends on what you put in. All right, so I really do hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.